Mapping your applications and app dynamics. One of the first things to do as you prepare to deploy app dynamics is to decide how you'll map your applications in the product. After watching this video, you will be able to map your applications in a way that your team will get the most out of app dynamics. Let's start with the definition. What is an application in app dynamics? App dynamics' definition of an application may be different from how you recognize your applications. App Dynamics recognizes your application in a hierarchical structure of application, tier, and node. What we call an application in App Dynamics is a complete distributed business application rather than a single deployment of code. It usually maps to what you would refer to as a site in your company. A tier in App Dynamics is simply a cluster of nodes all performing the same function. And a node is mapped to a single JVM or .NET application. Applications, tiers, and nodes are all named manually during the application's initial setup, so it's important to give them clear, descriptive, and familiar names at the outset. Let's use an example and see how we would map this sample travel agency application in AppDynamics. They have three websites, flights.com, lodging.com, and cruises.com. Inside their architecture, they have some back-end services that service all three websites. Here's an inventory system service. These three sites have to look up the availability of transportation and lodgings, and those requested are handled by the inventory service using a single database. And let's say here's another service handling all the credit card processing. So no matter which site your customers are on, when they pay for their purchases, they are using a shared purchasing engine. How would you model this in AppDynamics? In AppDynamics, these units you see are mapped as tiers because they are each simply a group of nodes running the same code and performing the same work. And all these units should be part of one AppDynamics application. Since most of the transactions have to go through these services and databases, we need to be able to follow the traffic flow into all these components in order to gain full visibility into your site's performance. If you can follow the traffic flow between these tiers, and monitor their response times, load, error rate, and correlate the data, you can easily troubleshoot and identify the root cause of an issue, and the extent of its effect. And since the traffic flow will be organized in meaningful units such as purchase tickets and flight search, you get a better understanding of your customers' experiences. What if you mapped each of these components as a separate AppDynamics application, and then model each of the backend services as its own AppDynamics application as well? This may seem to be more intuitive, initially if different teams are building each of those. However, the problem here is that it's so much easier to troubleshoot when these are bundled together as an application. Visibility of cross-application traffic flow is limited, so the person who is trying to troubleshoot a problem in the credit card processing service may not get a complete set of data about the origin of the traffic. You may see only some credit card transactions are stalled, but what are the common factors about those? You may not know. So let's make sure all servers that are interconnected and that communicate with each other belong in one AppDynamics application. Now here's a case where monitoring applications separately makes sense. Let's say your organization has a human resources management application too, and this does not share any resources with your travel applications. Then of course they should be mapped as separate applications. Or how about this case? Our travel booking sites, of course, have the production sites and test sites. Should we bundle the test and production sites together as one application? No. Production application and test application do not communicate with each other, so we want to keep them separate. Let's take a look at a real-life example. We are going to view an application mapped in the AppDynamics controller. Here you are looking at the AppDynamics user interface. From the home screen, you can see that two applications are currently being monitored. We are going to drill down into one of them. Now we are looking at the application dashboard. The flow map represents your application structure. Each of these symbols represents a single tier, and again, as we discussed, a tier is simply a set of nodes that are all performing the same work in a cluster. When you zoom in, you can view how many nodes there are under each tier. You can also click on any of these tiers to see details about its performance and a list of all its nodes. 
So you see the tier structure in this sample application resembles the travel sites example we have discussed. Commerce, inventory, and card processing functionalities are all bundled together as an application, as these tiers are communicating with each other and accessing the shared backends like databases, message queues, and other services. So by mapping the entire distributed business application into one AppDynamics application, we can see the whole life cycle of its transactions. When you see your processing tier suffers a sudden slowness, you don't just wonder whether the e-commerce transaction count has spiked up. You can check the load to that tier immediately yourself. If we had monitored each tier separately or just left some tiers out of our application, we would lose correlation between the tiers and a lot of important performance and troubleshooting information as well. We hope that this has helped you think about how to map out your applications in AppDynamics and to see the importance of doing it up front. We thank you for watching this video and hope you look forward to seeing more videos from AppDynamics University.